Hello friends. In this video we will study about the steppy type of climate or temperate continental climate which is also called as temperate grassland climate. As the name itself suggests this particular type of climate occurs in the temperate regions and it is predominantly a grassland type of climate and when we say continental it simply means that this particular climatic condition or climatic regions exist deep within the continental areas. So under the Köppen scheme of classification we have different climatic regions which are mainly divided based on natural vegetation and natural vegetation in turn is affected by various factors like precipitation, temperature, rain shadow effect, continentality etc. So of all this the most important factor is the precipitation and precipitation is a consequence of various other factors. So under the Köppen scheme mainly we have six different types in which we have studied about the first type which is called as tropical type of climates. In the tropical type of climatic regions we have studied about three different types mainly tropical wet which is also called as equatorial rainforest type of climate and we have studied about the tropical monsoon and savanna type of climate which is also called as tropical wet and dry type of climate. And in the tropical regions we have rainfalls varying between 150 to 250 centimeters. So this is the most important factor when it comes to tropical climatic regions. And the other one is B type of climate or dry type of climate. So under the Köppen scheme it is represented by the capital letter B. So in the B type of uh, type of climate the rainfall range is between 0 to 60 centimeters per annum. Sometimes it may go up to 75 centimeters. And again there are subtypes based on the rainfall levels. For example we have subtropical desert and su sub uh, mid latitude desert where the rainfall is between 0 centimeters and 25 centimeters. So these are the places with least amount of rainfall on earth and the other regions which have slightly higher amount of rainfall that is between 25 to 60 centimeters in general and in some cases in special cases this range varies from 25 to 75 centimeters. So these particular regions are called as subtropical steppe and mid latitude steppe. Subtropical steppe closely resembles tropical wet and dry type of climate or savanna type of climate so we will not study this in detail whereas the mid latitude steppe climate has lot of variations from the savanna grassland type of climate so we will study this thing in detail and it is represented by combination of various alphabets under the Köppen scheme here the B stands for dry type of climate and S stands for steppe and K stands for high latitude. Likewise we have H which stands for low latitude and W which stands for dry type of climate. So the mid latitude desert and subtropical desert climates are arid type of climates as we have seen the rainfall varies between 0 to 25 centimeters. Whereas the subtropical steppe and mid latitude steppe are semi arid type of climates where the rainfall is between 25 to 75 centimeters. In the northern hemisphere usually the range is between 25 to 60 centimeters whereas in the southern hemisphere the range is between 25 to 75 centimeters. We will see all this in detail. So this is our typical temperate grassland region would look like. So its distribution or uh, distribution of this particular type of climate is mainly affected by various factors. The first important one is the continentality and along with the con continentality there is one more important type uh, uh, condition which is called as rain shadow effect. So continenti continentiality along with the rain shadow effect mainly influence the climate or climatic conditions of this particular type of climate that is steppe or grassland type of climate. So these particular regions or uh, the steppe climatic regions mainly come under the western wind westerly wind belt. So we, we know about the planetary wind system where we have easterlies that is trade winds and then we have prevailing westerlies and then polar easterlies. So prevailing winds, prevailing westerlies are the ones which blow in the temperate regions. So they blow from subtropical high to subpolar low. So this is the region where this particular type of climatic conditions occur. That is in the westerly wind belt, both the hemispheres. And the most important feature is the treelessness of these particular regions. So we'll see why. And let us see first, let us see about the distribution and the regional names or variations of this particular type of climatic uh, condition. And the steppe type of climate which occurs in the European region is called as Pustas. It occurs around Hungary region. And we have prairies, the most famous ones, which occur in the North American region, mainly in Northern USA and Southern Canada. So they are the ones which are uh, surrounded which are to the west of Great Lakes region and this particular region is a very developed region because of various important factors. We'll see that. And then we have Pampas which is a part of South America. 
which is distributed among countries Argentina and Uruguay. So here it is mainly due to rain shadow effect. This particular grassland type exists mainly because of rain shadow effect. Whereas pustas exist because of continentality, whereas prairies exist because of both continentality as well as rain shadow effect. And we have bush weld and high weld which are part of South Afri Africa. So here again they are mainly due to the rain shadow effect of Deckensburg mountains. And we have downs in the Australian region, particularly in the Murray Darling Basin which is a part of South Eastern Australia. And this is mainly due to continentality. And we have Canterbury uh, grasslands which is also kind of steppy type of grassland region or climatic region which is a part of New Zealand. So we'll see the distribution. So we have Pustas which is a part of uh, Western uh, Europe mainly covering Hungary and certain other regions of Central and Western Europe. Uh, Ukraine etc all these parts come under the regions of Pustas uh, steppe grasslands and we have Asiatic steppes which mainly f uh, come in the regions of Kazakhstan, Mongolia etc. So this particular region is called as Asiatic steppes mostly to the west of Altai mountains and then we have prairies in the North American region and we have pampas in the South American region. So we, if you look at prairies they are to the west of sorry they are to the east of Rocky Mountains. So uh, the Rocky Mountains are the ones which are the main major contributory, fa contributory factor behind the formation of this particular glass, uh, grassland region. Here we can see the Rocky Mountains are influenced by westerlies. As a result on the western side there is good amount of rainfall because of uh, wind bearing uh, winds which strike the mountain in this direction. And on the eastern side where the wind is descending it is called as catabatic wind. It is a dry wind and hence it doesn't cause any rainfall and hence this particular region re remains semi-arid because of the rain shadow effect of rocky mountains. Along with that we have uh, Patagonian desert which is a part of rain shadow effect and the region surrounding the Patagonian desert to the north is called as Pampas. They are Pampas grasslands which is a semi-arid type of climatic region. Here again we have westerlies which are blocked by Alps mountains. On the western side we have good amount of rainfall because of the windward uh, side of the mountain. On the other side it is called as leeward side. On the leeward side because of the catabatic wind and uh, that is the dry wind we have very dry type of climatic conditions. So here again the pampas is formed mainly due to rain shadow effect of Alps like Rockies which affect the uh, the prairies region and we have the Welts region. Welts region is mainly affected by the winds that are blowing in this direction mostly easterlies. So here we have Dreckensburg mountain and hence again here the region is affected due to rain shadow effect and the ones that are blowing in the westerlies so westerlies blow when the apparent movement of sun shifts towards north. So in such a case again it is due to continentality and in Australia we have downs which occurs in Murray Darling Basin here it is mainly due to the effect of westerly winds which are uh, affected by continentality so as they flow from uh, this region to to a very long distance they lose all the moisture in the beginning regions as a result the winds that reach this particular place have little moisture and hence it remains as a semi-arid region and in a summer season especially when the sun shifts towards the tropic of Capricorn we have easterly winds flowing this region but easterly winds are again obstructed by the Alps of Australia which are called as Eastern Alps. So we have in this particular region we have mountains of uh, Eastern Australia. So this particular region again is affected by rain shadow effect in summer and continentality in winter. As a result again this particular region remains semi-arid or steppy type of climatic condition. And we have New Zealand here we have westerlies flowing in this particular region in this direction. So we have southern Alps which are part of Australia, New Zealand especially the southern island of New Zealand. So most of the rain bearing winds strike the western uh, side of the mountains as a result most of the rainfall occurs in this particular region which is called as windward side. On the leeward side because of catabatic wind the dry wind we have no rainfall and this particular region remains a semi-arid or steppy type of grassland region. So this particular grassland is given the name Canterbury. So we have seen Pustas, Prairies, Pampas, Downs and Canterbury. So these are different regional names of the same type of climatic condition that is the steppy type of climatic condition. So coming to the climate of steppy climate, the temperatures are usually extremes that is the summer temperature, the annual range is very high because the summers are warm and winters are very cold 
sometimes even below freezing. As a result, the annual range is very very high. Whereas coming to diurnal range, diurnal range in summer is high, whereas in winter it is very low. That is, in summer usually the days are very hot, whereas nights are cold. In winter, both days and nights are very very cold. As a result, the winter diurnal range is very low, whereas summer diurnal range is very high. Diurnal range is nothing but the daily av range. Coming to precipitation, here the average precipitation, average annual precipitation is 45 centimeters. We have seen that in the semi arid type of climate, the average annual rainfall varies between 25 to 60 centimeters in the northern hemisphere, hemisphere and 25 to 70 centimeters in the southern hemisphere. So this difference is mainly due to narrowness of continents in the southern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, air continentality is not a factor, only rain shadow effect is a factor. As a result, the rainfall air is comparatively higher than the ones in the northern hemisphere. And coming to maximum rainfall, maximum rainfall occurs in the summer season and hence it is called as winter maximum, maxima. So uh, winter maxima, uh, sorry, summer maxima, summer maxima is nothing but high rainfall in summer compared to, compared to the winter. So in the winter season, there is slight precipitation in the form of snow due to uh, occasional depressions that come in from in the due to, uh, that are brought by the westerlies. We know this particular region in the mid latitude uh, region is affected by the temperate cyclones. We have studied about jet streams and then we have studied about frontal cyclones and all. So all these concepts are the major influencing factors in the mid latitude region. So this particular region is affected by a uh, uh, temperate cyclones and this residual temperate cyclones which have little moisture bring certain amount of precipitation in the form of snow to the steppe region in spite of continentality. So the maritime influence in the southern hemisphere causes comparatively more amount of rainfall we have seen because of the narrowness of the continents. So this is all about the climate of steppe climatic regions. So there is one more important concept called as Chinook winds. Chinook wind is a local wind. I have explained this wind uh, previously in my video on wind systems. So as this wind is of local importance and it is economically a very important wind, we'll see this again. So Chinook is a dry wind or warm wind which blows on the leeward side of the Rockies mountains. So in Australia, sorry, in uh, North America we have Rockies. On the western side it is Pacific Ocean, on the eastern side it is Prairies. So the winds that are flowing from the Pacific Ocean have moisture and they are uplifted by the Rockies and hence they cause good amount of rainfall in this particular region or the windward side of the Rockies whereas on the leeward side they are descending they are called as catabatic winds so this particular catabatic wind is a dry wind so it doesn't bring any rainfall this is how rain shadow effects uh, rain shadow effect influences the steppe type of climate during winter months there is a similar local wind which is called as Chinook so this particular wind blows in the uh, typically in the winter only as a result it is called as local wind as it occurs only during a particular period of the year and this particular wind is a catabatic wind and this wind is lo of local importance because it melts the frozen land so the regions of North America especially the southern Canada and northern USA are very cold in winters sometimes the temperature might drop to below freezing as a result all the grassland is covered by snow or ice and this kind type of condition is very bad for ranching activities or animal rearing activities because the grass is covered by snow. But in winter because of this friendly wind, the grass, uh, the warm dry wind that is the Chinook, it melts the snow and all the snow is gone in the form of floods. As a result, the grasses are cleared and it is good for pasturing. So this is one very important wind which affects the economic condition of the region by clearing the grasslands and enabling the ranching facilities. Uh, the special term given to them is snow eaters because they, uh, they melt all the snow benefiting the farmers in the region. Coming to vegetation, the most important feature is the treelessness. Now let us compare this with the savanna type of climate which is also a grassland type of climate. So in savanna type of climate, there is grasslands as well as there are uh, trees, li trees like acacias. So these trees are comparatively taller and the, they are widely distributed. Whereas the trees in uh, the trees when we take the climatic conditions of steppes, the trees are almost absent. So this is one major difference between savanna and steppe type of climate. And coming to grasses, the grasses in steppes are short, they are nutritious and they are good for pasturing. Whereas in the savanna type of climate, the grasses are very wiry and bunchy which is nothing but they are very rough and they are very tall like the elephant grass. 
and these grasses are not suitable for grazing and in certain regions where there is good amount of grass we have good wildlife so this is the major difference between the veg natural vegetation of uh, savanna and stable type of climates so here the grasses are fresh and nutritious, nutritious and support good pasturing lands and there are certain lands in the asian steppes within the uh, interiors of asia where the soil is, soil is very poor and the rainfall is very very low in such a case we have the grasses which are not so nutritious so these grasses are wiry that is they are lean and very coarse or tough and the grass is very sparse and hence the pasturing is not a, a not at an advantage in this particular region whereas in the other exception this is just an exception whereas other uh, steppe region is very good for pasturing activities so these areas are less suitable for farming and ranching activities are undertaken especially with a hybrid variety of grasses called as alfa alfa so by planting this particular type of grasses the wiry and very bad grass is replaced by a good grass called as alfa alfa which is nutritious so by replacing with alfa alfa the ranching facilities have been developed in in this particular type of non arable lands and in the savanna type of climate we have grasses where which are very lush green in the summers because of good rainfall whereas in winters they could go completely dry and uh, very dry because of the dry climatic conditions whereas in the steppe type of climates there is no such thing and the grasses remain uh, with their uh, the kind of nature or their physical properties they maintain it for a very long time throughout the year irrespective of the varying climatic conditions so the grasses the growth of grasses here is not abruptly checked by summer droughts or winter cold so as we move polewards usually the grasses give away for the conifers so after this we have uh, the taiga type of climate which is uh, starts which starts after this steppe type of climate and in the cultivated regions such as prairies we have uh, wheat farms and here there are certain types of plantation trees which are grown as wind belts or shelter belts which are a kind of soil conservation strategy where the farm as well as soil is protected by the plantation or uh, plantation trees for example in india too we have certain plantations in tamil nadu and other region and i have given this in my notes so this particular type of plantation is important for protecting or conserving the soil as well as crops and coming to animals this is the one important difference between steppe and savanna type of climate in savanna type of climate we have a wide ranging animal life varying from carnivores to herbivores whereas in the steppe type of climate this particular feature is absent that is the animal diversity is very low and here horse is the chief animal along with that we have cows and various other cattle which are usually raised for economic activities so coming to the economy of the region these regions which were were very underdeveloped few centuries ago because of continentality that is a less amount of rainfall but during the recent times with the mechanization of agriculture these regions have are developed intensively because of mainly wheat cultivation and dairy farming that is ranching for uh, meat as well as milk so all these activities have developed these particular regions of steppes so here extensive mechanized wheat cultivation is one important economic activity along with the pastoral farming or ranching activities so before the invention of refrigeration this particular region didn't have very significant ranching or uh, dairying activities because uh, the products of beef as well as milk they are perishable that is they get destroyed when stored for a very long time and as they could not be exported to various regions as a result the steppe type of climate didn't encourage extensive ranching or pasturing activities but in the later case in the later stages when the refrigeration was invented it was now possible to export these abundant qualities of milk and beef which is produced in the region so with the refrigeration the economic scenario of the region completely changed now the ranching and allied uh, cattle rearing and allied activities are the most important economic activities in the region where we have milk butter uh beef etc which are exported from these particular regions to the rest of the world for example we have australia where uh, especially in the australian st uh, savanna steppes so are the savanna grasslands which are now intensively under ranching facilities here the beef and other products are packed 
refrigerated and packed and they are exported to various parts of the uh, world especially european regions and from new zealand that is the steppe regions that is the Can canterbury plains here also there is extensive cattle rearing and the beef and milk products from here are exported to mainly europe and other parts of world and we have seen mechanization of ag agriculture is the most important factor so nothing is done manually or every agricultural activity is carried out by machines and here the region is very flat or it is completely plain region as a result there is no uh, constraints when it comes to agricultural development and in certain regions the soil is very rich and in particular the, those particular regions it uh, completely encourages the mechanization of agriculture with very good yields and most of the agricultural produce which is produced here it goes into beefing of animals where the animals are beefed up with the help of all these grains and uh, fodder uh, material and this extensively supports ranching activities for example in the prairies region we have uh, extensive ranching facilities so in the prairies we have a lot of fodder material like maize wheat etc which is grown and in the surrounding regions we have ranching facilities especially in the dry regions and all the fodder is carried out it carried to the dry regions and here we have ranching facilities and we can see the animals are ranched and fed here so their weight and uh, milk producing capacity is increased so the animals which are purely grown for beef purposes are taken to beef industry in chicago and various regions in the great lakes uh, surrounding the great lakes and from here the beef is exported to various parts of the world and when it comes to milk produce again the very produce of the prairies is used for uh, feeding the high yielding varieties of cattle see unlike in the tropical regions where the cattle industry is discouraged because of tropical diseases and lack of good grasses uh, this uh, steppe type of climatic regions encourages pasturing as well as uh, various other cattle rearing industry because of good grasses as well as less number of diseases so ranching is the most important facility and whenever there is a bad grass in the region it is replaced by lucerne and alfa alfa so these kind of varieties strongly uh, support the cattle rearing industry and in certain regions nomadic herding is followed especially in the asiatic steppes but this is now discouraged because of collective farmings which are uh, which is a kind of socialist uh, socialistic uh, economic activity which is mainly occurs in the regions of kazakhstan and uh, regions surrounding the southern Aust uh, russia so prairies are the most important regions so here extensively wheat cultivation is carried out extensively so we can see this is the main prairie region so most of the grasses i mean most of the fodder is grown in this particular region and we have chicago and other regions which are part of great lake region so all the grass or wheat or whatever fodder material is grown in this particular region is transported to the beef industry or ranching facilities in the surrounding states so the ranching facilities here help the rearing of cattle on huge ranches or huge uh, grazing facilities as well as uh, fenced uh, surroundings and from here once the animal grows to considerable size it is taken to beef processing industries which are present in the around the great lakes region so from here fodder goes to the surrounding states from here beef or uh, animals goes to the chicago region or the great lakes region here the beef is processed and exported to the rest of the world through st lawrence waterway st lawrence waterway is the one that connect, connect connects great lakes region to the atlantic ocean so here the prairies are of great economic significance because to the australia uh, to the usa where usa is now uh, a major exporter of wheat and various beef products so prairies are uh, here are called as granaries of the world because most of the wheat cultivation occurs in this particular region so coming to economic activities of various other uh, steppe grasslands we have prairies here we have seen extensive wheat cultivation and intensive ranching are the major occupations and in pustas that is in the hungary and parts of europe we have rich black soil which supports wheat, pro wheat production and one important alternative for sugar cane which is called a sugar beet is grown in this particular region and we have other countries like ukraine ukraine is a very important producer of sugar beet as well as wheat so these are all very good regions which support extensive mechanized agriculture and ranching facilities and we have pampas which is a part of south africa south america sorry and here again the ranching and 
beef industry is the most important economic activity argentina mainly depends on beef exports for its economy and we have downs and canterbury where we have merino sheep so wool production is very uh, a chief occupation of australia and parts of new zealand this is because of the presence of good variety of sheep called as merino sheep and here we have seen there are extensive rearing facilities in the form of uh, steppe grasslands so here the wool industry is very developed and we have welts the part of south america south africa here the most important activity is sheep and cattle rearing like the rest of steppe regions so we can see various locations we have pampas in south america we have high veld and low veld in south africa and then we have so this is high and low veld and we have pustas in the region of hungary romania and ukraine and we have steppes eastern steppes in mongolia and western steppes in kazakhstan so in australia this is murray darling basin here in this particular re region we have australian ste australian downs so steppe grasslands is called downs so let us compare between tropical and temperate grasslands so we have tropical grasslands within tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn especially the savannas which surround the rainforest regions and we have the temperate grasslands we can see different types of temperate grasslands which are beyond the tropical regions so this is all about steppe type of climate hope uh, you understood well this concept thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe